here with me here at CES 2024. Joining us is the CEO of Swarovski Optics, Stefan Schwartz. Thank you so much for joining us today. Swarovski Optic, what does the brand mean in 2024? So 2024 is a very important year for Swarovski Optics. So we are coming 75 years old as a company with a long heritage in precision optics, uh, leading this, this, <laughs> this category for a while. But it's also the year when we introduced the first smart binocular. So integrating analog technology with di digital mm. technology. So it's going to be a very important year because, because we're going to drive the category to new heights in the future. Wow, so what is, it, what is a smart binocular? What does that mean? A smart binocular is basically the combination mm -hmm. between an analog binocular yeah. where you can observe nature mm -hmm. uh, with an analog uh, camera which gives you additional information about what you're observing. Sure. So that's the first time we are combining cool. uh, yeah. something like that with integrated yeah. apps in the product. And I understand this is your first uh, time as a company at CES itself, so welcome to CES. Yeah, thanks um, a lot. Uh, I, what's your message here at CES? I assume it has a lot to do with this uh, exciting announcement that you just had. Yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's one big message is that uh, this technology and I, AI can really leverage the consumer experience of nature observers. So they can basically move from just seeing and observing in order mm -hmm. to detect. So they can learn a lot yeah. about of what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. So it's enhancement of consumer mm -hmm. experience. And that's what we are offering here at the yeah. CES. And, and um, when you say they can learn kind of about what they're seeing, what are, what are some of the kinds of things that you can tell me if I'm looking through the lenses? What are some of the things that I could learn? Yeah, we are very, we are very close to nature. Mm -hmm. So our DNA is nature. We're in the business for the love of nature. Yeah. So that's why we are very close to uh, help the consumer on detecting animals, especially yes. mammals and, 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 and birds. So we have about 9,000 birds you can detect in the, with the binocular that's cool. around the world. Yeah, wow. Um, and so uh, are, you, are you using AI to do this? Is this a, something that you've had to invent? Is this a novel approach to AI here? Yeah, I, I mean, this, this technology gives us the opportunity to introduce AI into the consumer experience, but we probably do it in a different way. So still, the way we are using AI is probably different than in, 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 in other areas. So mm -hmm. the consumer still stays in the real world. So he still looks through right. the lens as he's in the real world. Mm -hmm. AI provides additional information so he can learn and becomes an, he becomes an expert in what he's seeing. Mm -hmm. So usually birders were always uh, the ones who were the experts detecting the birds, looking at the yeah. books. Now everybody can do that. Everybody can basically detect the birds or the animals they see. And I imagine a benefit to that is that you can do that more seamlessly through the experience. You're not looking up, trying to rifle through a book, find something, and then, oh, the bird is gone or something. Exactly. You can actually have that experience yeah. in the yeah. moment. Right. Um, that's interesting, and, and, and when you have these kind of AI-enabled products, does it change, uh, does, it, does it make additional changes in the behavior of consumers or the, the feeling that consumers have when they're actually out in nature? Yeah, absolutely. So we are clearly close to our consumers, so in the various areas like uh, hunting, birding, and uh, in the outdoors, so we know what, what the consumer needs and wants. Yeah. And uh, so it, it, we will change a lot of the behavior of the, of the consumer by helping them you know, with additional information mm -hmm. about getting the expert in the, mm -hmm. the activity he's yeah. doing. So the behavior will be different yeah. because he's not only see the unseen, this is our claim for several years, but he can yeah. see beyond seeing. So he gets a lot more about mm -hmm. the, the, the knowledge, about the, uh, uh, the birds, about the animals he's seeing. So he turns from an amateur to an expert yeah. while using the product seamlessly. And is the, is the AI leveraging uh, you know, the, the colors and the shape, or also is it, is it even leveraging the movement? So in other words, is the AI taking uh, a, a photo and then uh, referencing that, or is it actually referencing the way the bird might move and, yeah, and yeah. even sound? Uh, or yeah. Our framework is different. So we, we won't pull the consumer away from reality. Mm -hmm. So he still sees reality. Yes. He's not looking at a display. And that's okay. very important for us yeah. because he's looking on a display all day long. Yeah. So he's in the nature, he's seeing the nature. So it's not a display, yeah. but he gets additional uh, information mm -hmm. into the into the, the screen, yeah. so that he basically gets uh, information mm -hmm. on what he's seeing, mm -hmm. but he still is in reality. So we are not not manipulating anything, mm -hmm. but we're giving yeah. additional information. That's how we are using yeah. nature and the real world with artif yeah. artificial intelligence yeah. in order to leverage this totally in 360 experience. And is the, the and, and is the data that you're using for that? Do you 
are, do you, are, I, guess, I guess I'm curious, as, I guess my curiosity is if I see a bird at a far distance away, maybe I can't even quite tell what color it is, yeah. but maybe I can tell from the pattern of its movements or flight. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not a birder, so I don't actually even know how to ask this question. Yeah. Is, that, is that some of the data that you can actually pull in to answer the question of yeah, yeah. what am I looking at? Yeah, exactly. There's a tons of data behind that. Yeah. And all the data is in our smart binocular. Yeah. So you're connected with your app. So everything which you basically see mm -hmm. and which you detect, you automatically get on your app as sure. well. Yeah. So there's big data behind that. So you can mm -hmm. see the bird from far away. You can mm -hmm. see the, and you can, you are able to detect the bird yeah. once the bird is flying, sitting somewhere and all of that. But there are additional features as well. So you basically can share the point of interest. So mm -hmm. when, when you see something very interesting, you can mark it, give it to your friend and he will be uh, okay. guided to what's the thing you want to show him. There's that so nest that It's a GPS yeah. uh, mm -hmm. integration as well. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so it seems like there's a lot of possible, uh, interesting ways that this could go. What do you, what do you think, uh, uh, we hope that you continue to come back to CES and the C-Space Studio here, of course. Uh, what do you think we would talk about in five years if we had a conversation? Where could this technology go? Yeah. I mean, we are starting now today, basically introducing the smart binocular. But when I'm here five years uh, from now, or we're gonna lead the category into a new dimension. Yeah. So the category binoculars was really much driven by analog technology. Mm -hmm. So with this integration of, of digital technology, of AI, yeah. we're gonna drive the, t uh, the category into, the, into mm -hmm. a totally new direction. Mm -hmm. it's, you can probably combine it or uh, uh, compare it with when uh, the analog photography went into digital photography. Uh, mm -hmm. So we, we, we could make and we could see pretty much the same thing happening mm -hmm. when we are introducing the smart binocular. Yeah. And I guess we're gonna be the market leader in five years when it's about smart discovery of nature and that's very important for us. Yeah. And this is potentially a silly question, but the physics of binoculars require the lens to be a certain length, right? Like is there is there a possibility that you could condense the lens size down over, or, you know, is, I'm, I'm obviously just completely speculating here, so just take yeah. me, if I'm, if I'm derailing this conversation, please let no me know. No worries. But is that, is that also something, the physical shape of these things, could they change over time? No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, we are starting with the first uh, smart binocular. Yeah. Of course, the first smart binocular won't look the same as in, in five years. Mm -hmm. So we have all kind of possibility working on platforms, yeah. on getting our technology on different sizes mm -hmm. in different areas. And we won't only stick to birding. We're mm -hmm. gonna use it in sure. outdoor, in all our other mm -hmm. uh, categories and for all our yeah. consumers we're serving. Um, we like to do a little fill in the blank sometimes. Yeah. Uh, 2024 will be the year of blank. 2024 will be the year of us introducing the first smart binocular, giving the yes. consumer a new experience. And for us as a company, it really is, uh, mm -hmm. will give us a new opportunity in order to really think and, and, and act more on mm -hmm. technology, yeah. which is more digital than yeah. analog. So it's, it's changing mm -hmm. our company as well. So the year 24 mm -hmm. is, is kind of a, a big, big uh, a start into a new direction. And how do you think about this in the context of sustainability, either technology or that you're using to make your own company more sustainable, or maybe if people can see the world in a new way, yeah. they want to be more sustainable. How do you think about that? Yeah. I, I, you can imagine, for us, nature is, is super important yeah. because that's what we want to bring the people closer to. Yeah. So we need to protect nature. So sustainability is very important for us. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, when you, when you look at our products, they are timeless in design. We use very high quality uh, 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 materials mm -hmm. and uh, we're producing in Austria with craftsmanships, which is really bringing the, the product uh, for a lifetime. Yeah. So when probably you got your first binocular if you have a binocular, mm -hmm. but you probably got your first binocular from your grandpa. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a lifetime you product. It, yeah. It's a lifetime product. But now with uh, the sti digital enabled products, yes. we also can make the product new every year because mm -hmm. we can add app Continue applications, we can improve mm -hmm. it and all of that. So for us, yep. sustainability is mm -hmm. really driven by this technology yep. as well. Uh, one more question for you. W is there something outside of your industry that inspires you to keep innovating? We talked about nature, obviously. I assume that's the number one inspiration for a lot of what you do. I think number one inspiration is the consumer mm -hmm. in the different areas we are, we, are, we are playing because the consumer has more needs and we want to be problem solvers. Yeah. So we want to solve the, the needs of the consumer. Yeah. So the consumer is the first source of, of inspiration. And the probably the second uh, source of inspiration is nature. Yeah. Because as you know, in other categories, a lot of innovations came from nature. Mm -hmm. But probably the, the, the uh, one of the, the, the major driver for us as a company is in 75 years 
was basically set up by our founder uh, who basically said that we always need to improve the good things to make it better. Mm -hmm. So it's a DNA we are having in the company yeah. in all what we are doing. Well, Swarovski Optics CEO Stefan Schwartz, thank you so much for joining us here in the C-Space studio. You are welcome. And we really appreciate you watching us here in the C-Space studio here at CES 2024. Keep it right here. More great conversations are just ahead. I'm James Kotecki. Stay with us.